Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Tonight at 6, pandemic issues from the Postal Service to the classroom. A dire situation for schools statewide. And with staff shortages across the country, some big changes to the nation's mail system. Uh, the rural community depends on the United States Postal Service uh, for delivery. The steps being taken here at home to address these lingering challenges. And good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm John Carlin. Restaurants, hospitals, schools, the impact of COVID-19 has led to stress and burnout for so many people. Now, Botetourt County school leaders are launching a new program to address these pandemic challenges. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder is working for you to break down how this first of its kind schedule could improve teachers mental health. School division leaders here in Botata County say the decision to have early dismissal on Wednesdays will help teachers and other faculty members address some of the challenges that this school year has created. Teachers in Botata County will now have the opportunity to catch up after a school year like no other. I don't want to say that our teachers are burned out, but they're taking a lot on them. The school day ending early one day a week means teachers will spend the afternoon planning and catching up on work. Many teachers and faculty members are taking on extra work because of a lack of substitutes. At the end of a work day, our, our teachers have worked without break and without that planning period to really keep their students all on track and progressing through the curriculum, you know, they're they're needing some extra support and time to take care of this. But Botata County is is not alone. James Fetterman is the president of the Virginia Education Association. He says this is a problem throughout the Commonwealth and the country. I would say being overwhelmed is an understatement at this point. Fetterman believes that teachers need to have a seat at the table in order for their voices to be heard. Many of them are neglecting self-care and when they cannot be 100 percent within themselves, it's almost impossible to do the job effectively in the classroom. In the short term, Botetourt school leaders hope this minor change will make a big difference for the people overseeing their students' education. This is just a small token for the division to show them that their efforts and their work is greatly appreciated and that we want to support them. The change is set to begin on October 20th. Each individual school will be sending out announcements about after-school activities and sports. In Botetourt County tonight, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Starting today, changes at the U.S. Postal Service could lead to delivery delays and higher prices for the gift-giving season. About 30 percent of first-class mail will now take about five days to be delivered. We're told they'll be using more ground transportation, so mostly long-distance deliveries will be affected. With the holidays, supply chain issues, and staffing shortages, it will likely put more pressure on workers. These delays would also take a toll on rural areas, especially for the elderly who rely on mail carriers for both food and medication. A lot of those people don't have, don't even have the opportunity or the transportation to get in and even go uh, to a Rite Aid or a CVS or, or Walgreens or Walmart to even get their prescriptions. So. Uh, I know I know we're going to be targeting those type, types of mail to make sure that they get delivered. The move is part of the agency's 10 year plan to improve service and achieve financial sustainability. More than a thousand people got a third dose of the Pfizer vaccine today in Roanoke. It was the first large COVID-19 booster clinic for the Berglund Center. Only those over age 65 or considered high risk were eligible for the shot. One retired teacher told us that he got the dose so he could protect himself and loved ones. The kids, some of the younger kids can't get vaccinated yet. So it's important for us to protect our children by making sure that we're up to date on all of our vaccinations. There are more than 800 slots available for next week's booster clinic, and those who are eligible can also schedule an appointment through a local pharmacy. Turning now to the forecast, where we are seeing just absolutely beautiful fall light conditions. And meteorologist Delaney Warden is here to uh, tell us how long it'll last. And God, what a great night for Friday night football. Yes. And everything going on. Yes, the weather is going to be perfect tonight, tomorrow morning, and then we actually warm right back up. We're only briefly staying this way for today. We are looking at a temperature currently of 75 here in Roanoke, overlooking downtown Roanoke, seeing those nice blue skies. Winds are calm, dew points are 
low. Of course, that means lower humidity. It was feeling great outside today. 70s across much of the board with the exception of hot springs along with Hillsville mid 60s in Hillsville. So you're already starting to cool down quickly, but you're actually 10 degrees warmer over at Smith Mountain Lake and 72 for both Blacksburg and Lewisburg here over the next few hours. If you are planning on heading out for this evening, we're going from about 71 degrees at 7 p.m. all the way down to 61 by 10 p.m. So if you are heading out, you get cold easily. Grab a light jacket, wear a long sleeve shirt. Other than that, things are going to be very calm for us. More details on your weekend forecast are coming up. John. Many are remembering a Danville legend tonight. Former Mayor Linwood Wright died Wednesday at the age of 85. He was a city council member from 1986 to 1998, including terms as vice mayor and mayor. Wright also worked at Dan River Incorporated in various executive roles, and he was a consultant with the Danville Economic Development Office. We're told that he loved the city and was passionate about economic development. The current mayor says he was also a great mentor. Um, he's going to be really, really missed because he was very, he was a friend. He was a, re a real, real friend to me. There will be a memorial service for Wright on October 16th at Mount Vernon United Methodist Church. A student-led movement to raise awareness about sexual misconduct is getting support from Liberty University's president. People in Lynchburg have been using teal ribbons as a call to action. A new website also includes a petition to investigate the school's human resources and Title IX offices. Jerry Prevo told students at convocation this morning that Liberty should be a safe place for everyone. We want you to feel safe. We don't want any sexual harassment or sexual abuse. I don't. And I've told the department that deals with that. I said, you take every complaint seriously and you deal with it seriously. As we've been reporting, 12 women filed a lawsuit against LU claiming leaders created an unsafe campus environment and failed to properly address sexual violence. Dedication to academic success and innovation, that was the message during Radford's State of the University address this morning. The interim president, uh, president spoke about highlights from the past year while also looking ahead to the future. This includes efforts to expand education along with economic growth on campus. We'll see that our Highlander Hotel, we've broken ground on that. We've taken down a couple of historic buildings on campus to, to make room for some new space. It's going to be the largest and most comprehensive building on our campus. So the next several months, you'll see growth, and that's something that we're really proud of. We are told that 2020 was also the school's most successful fundraising year yet, as they raised more than $16 million. Earlier this afternoon, the University of Lynchburg inaugurated its 11th president, Dr. Allison Morrison Shetler. She has been taking action since her arrival last August. Through her initiative, Lynchburg Tomorrow, the university is training community leaders, raising money to fight food insecurity and partnering on health care. I appreciate the caring, learning family you've created here, and I am proud to be part of it. You are the heart of our learning community. And the impact that you have on the lives of our students cannot be easily measured. Today's event follows a week of activities to celebrate the change in leadership. Growing beards for a worthy cause while one local police department is kicking off No Shave November ahead of schedule. Plus an overwhelming success for the largest sunflower festival on the East Coast. The two factors that led to this year's stunning harvest. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question, and we'll work on an answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. October 1st marks the start of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The Virginia Breast Cancer Foundation held a virtual awards ceremony today to honor those who are making a difference in the fight against the disease while also celebrating 30 years of service. The organization is based in Richmond, but it does have an office in Roanoke. And WSLS 10 will be sponsoring a virtual program for Southwest Virginia later this month. A local police department kicking off No Shave November 
a month early. Amherst officers are hosting an event called Beards for Kids. So from now through November 30th, members of the department are growing facial hair to support their fourth annual toy drive operation, which runs over the holidays. We got to give these guys some time to actually grow some facial hair. So um, maybe uh, having an extra month might help it out a little bit, but you know, it, it usually takes a good couple of months to raise the funds and actually get the toys in to make a very successful toy drive. I've already got, I think, six sponsors that want to sponsor me. Um, several other officers have a couple of sponsors as well. Uh, I think it's really, we're a, we're a tight knit community here. Did we just hear a facial hair jab there? <laughs> I think we did. But anyway, what a great idea. What a great cause. Last year, the department donated more than a thousand toys to children in need. That was good. <laughs> well, the weather for this weekend running warmer, but we have quite the roller coaster ride over the next several days. Details are coming up next. Fall fun continues in the New River Valley this weekend. You can get lost in this massive corn maze at the Sinkland Farms Pumpkin Festival. Other activities include horseback rides, live music, and local vendors, along with a top-rated pumpkin patch. All of this lasts till October 31st. Good weather and good planning are being credited for a record-breaking turnout at the Beaver Dam Farm Sunflower Festival. We want to show you this new video that shows what happens during the two months before the annual event. Look at this drone footage here. We're told that the warm temperatures helped grow the thousands of sunflowers up in Buchanan, and organizers say those bright fields of gold brought people to our region from all across the country. The fact that people want us to know where they're from um, and, you know, just to see that we pull in more than just the local crowd is um, very humbling for us to know that more people come out than just those around. Got to tell you, I checked it out. It was awesome. And the uh, festival ended last week, but workers at the farm say it's never too early to start preparing for next year's harvest. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Cooler weather for us today, actually more average for this time of year than the 80s that we've experienced throughout much of the week. Satellite and radar here at home, very quiet. We've seen some higher cirrus clouds today. Other than that, not much impacting our skies. We hold on to some rain off to our west. We won't have to deal with that here for tonight or even into tomorrow. Now temperatures for the moment are still in the 70s, but some areas are starting to cool down. We're holding on to some 60s now over towards Hillsville and Withville here in Roanoke still at 73 degrees after hitting a high of 75 just a short time ago. 76 currently at Smith Mountain Lake. If you're heading out for this evening, our temperatures are going to be dropping pretty quickly because we have those clear skies overhead. 71 degrees around 7 p.m. By the time we're reaching 9 p.m., we are down to about 63 degrees, low to mid 60s, really. So a quiet evening for us. Temperatures will be dropping back into the 50s by tomorrow morning. Not as many 40s as we saw this morning morning back towards the New River Valley, actually a little bit more seasonal for this time of year. So 54 here in Roanoke, 55 in Danville and back towards Pulaski will be reaching 52 degrees. And then for tomorrow afternoon, we are warming right back up into the 80s. We have now high pressure system situated nearby and that's going to bring us not only more sunshine, but allow our temperatures to warm up. So 84 in the afternoon for Roanoke along with Danville, still seeing some 70s though throughout the New River Valley along with the Highlands. Then we want Watch our dew points today. They've been fantastic, low humidity for us, and then we head into the next few days. All of that will be changing. So if you have any chores to do outside this weekend, note that the humidity is also going to be higher. Make sure you're taking frequent breaks with those warmer temperatures. It's definitely going to be noticeable that humidity increasing for us. High pressure is here for this the moment. However, that will push off towards the east and we bring in our next cold front, our next low pressure system. Not not only that, but we're also going to be bringing in some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So that's going to start to bring us some rain heading into Sunday night. This continues to push off towards the east, but that rain really holding strong as we continue to bring in more moisture from the south. In fact, even as we head towards say six to 10 days out, we're still going to see above average rainfall for this time of year. So even after Monday, that low pressure system is actually going to sink a little bit to the south, but all that's going to do 
is wrap that rain around and that moisture around and bring it back here at home Wednesday morning. Still holding on to that rain even by Thursday. Things are still looking to be rainy for us. So your three day zone forecast, you will be seeing those temperatures a little bit warmer for this weekend until we start to cool down for Monday and heading into the new work week. Those temperatures will be staying mostly in the 70s, a few 60s the further west that you live, though rain chances pretty much consistent over the next few days or excuse me for the work week. And then by the end of the work week, those temperatures are going to be staying cooler in the low to mid 70s. Abby. All right, Delaney, we'll hear from Bronco after that UVA stunner in South Florida last night. And Eric is standing by with a live report from our game of the week. The Bengals at the Warriors sports is next. And now the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. I don't know how to um, to describe it, and um, I'm just grateful that um, uh, on the road in an ACC an ACC game, a place this is the third year in a row, and I've, we've never won here, and that just this team deserves a lot of credit for that. UVA getting their first ACC win in dramatic fashion. That 33-yard field goal that doinks the upright at Hard Rock Stadium. Cavaliers 30-28 to over Miami. Our first and 10 game of the week. Tonight, a Southside showdown. And you know I love it when they play for a special trophy. Check. 10 Sports' Eric Johnson is live at the stadium they refer to as the hole. It's Magna Vista. Eric. Hey, Appy, you know, it's been a fast takeoff for Bassett, who's looked like one of the better teams in all of Class 3. And despite a rocky start, history tells me that this is the part of the flight, so to speak, in which Magna Vista flips the switch in order to gear up for a playoff run. Now we're trying to go out and win every game, trying to get playoff points, like you said. We've got to play, uh, you know, good football for us to, to have the results we want. Sitting at 2-2, two and two, the Warriors have been battle-tested against the likes of LCA and Franklin County. Losses they feel made them stronger, led by Penn State commit Tyler Johnson at wideout and Xavion Estes at running back. We've taken care of the football. We've moved the ball well against anybody. Uh, you know, when we've given up turnovers and short fields, you know, that hasn't, hasn't been a good result for us. Speaking of the battle up front, Bassett's offensive line has been the aggressor, allowing the offense to rush for nearly 1,000 yards this season, with over 700 of them coming from Simeon Walker Muse. They don't have the size, but they most definitely have the mindset to, that they can do whatever they want. And so does the rest of the Bengals team as they continue to carry out the all-in state of mind with the hopes of having a smooth landing at season's end, starting with a statement win in the hole. We just need to focus and execute, you know. That's, that's the whole game plan for everybody. I tell my kids, let's have 8K vision. Let's focus in on what matters. Let the background be blurred. It's worth noting both coaches pointed out that tackling will be a point of emphasis tonight. It was an issue during the spring season, which resulted in that shootout victory for Bassett, 56 to 55. Of course, we'll have highlights and reaction coming up tonight at 11, 10 p.m. But for now, we're live in Ridgeway, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Thank you, Eric. Should be a good one. Full slate of week six collisions. Battle of unbeatens. Christiansburg is at Salem tonight. LCA is unbeaten. Another road test at Rustburg, plus a whole lot more at 1110. Philly's holding a chunk of Ben Simmons' salary in escrow. We do the same with John Carlin just to keep the books sure, balanced. Sure. North Cross has already won today. Cup racing at Talladega Sunday. I don't know what to say. Maybe a fashion statement by Tony Gonsolin right here. He's Whoa. nicknamed the Cat Man or the King of Catter Days with the crazy cat cleats worthy of your cut it out. Is that every game or just? I'm not sure, yeah. but he seems to be enjoying them. Okay. Whatever. Nightly News coming up next. I'll see you back here at 7.